Welcome to game number one on Akalon Waste. I am Menasaur, a Zerg from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And in the bottom right hand corner, we have that purple Terran who represents University of New Mexico. His name is Tyr. In the top left hand corner, representing UT San Antonio, we have that pink Protoss, and his name is Adderus. TVP on Akalon Waste. What I like about this map, if you are any of those two uh, races, is the ease in which you can take a third. You have an easily defended third or fourth option for this general area with the destructible rocks protecting it. And also, the other optional third location shares the, shares the same airspace with your natural. So you only really need to focus on one general area when it comes to um, anti-air or static D, like this you only need to focus on defending that general area. But uh, we do see a lot of areas for drop on the sides of the mains. And in this particular matchup, you're going to see with Terran Reaper expand mostly, or some type of one base, either all in or one 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 play. It, it basically just depends. Depending on his gas timing, we're going to see what's happening. I do remember this. I do remember a Skype call being initiated to everyone on the UNM team. And I was like, oh, tears in this game. That's probably going to suck. And it certainly did. Uh, gas timing from our Terran indicates uh, definitely a Reaper. Going to have a Reaper opening. And our Protoss player has taken a uh, both gases immediately, indicating he wants to tech fairly quickly into either a Stargate or um, something from the Twilight Council. So blink all in or... DTs, but I don't think DTs is going to be the option. Blink Stalkers, um, it's kind of a broken build right now against Terran. I mean, it depends on your skill level, but I think it's somewhat broken. Especially on the map. It depends on the map. If you get Blink Stalker all in, um, I mean, Yensu is really hard to hold. But this is a very, this is a very big main, if, if that did decide to happen. Cybercore coming down. Um, basically, by the time the third pylon gets down and we see that third building, that's going to be his tech choice. Will it be proxied? We do have a pro um, a probe moving to the optional fifth location. And we will see... Yes, we will see a proxy for a fourth pylon. So it may be, again, proxy Stargate, proxy Twilight Council. We'll have to see what his next building is. But he's moving his probe away looking for something. Um, Tears Reaper is out. It's going to head and check out the main base. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we do have a Twilight Council, but it will be in his main. Um, that's not necessarily a good idea. If he put this pylon down there, I don't understand why he didn't just put the building over there. Um, Tears going to scout this. Uh, his Reaper is in the main. He's going to see the gases. And if he does, I mean, even if he sees the gases, he's going to see the Twilight Council. Tier coming up and around, coming up and around, and clicked it, knows what it is, he's going to get out of there, and start preparing, he did put down his um, expansion already, he is putting down a factory right now, uh, definitely going to try to get tanks out, that's actually the best thing you would need to do, he already has a bunker in the front, I kind of don't like the, I mean the location is what it is, um, I, I kind of don't like putting supply depots, well I mean he doesn't know if it's completely, if it's not uh, DTs or not, so. We are seeing Blink researched immediately. More uh, two stalkers leaving the base, one probe. This is going to be a really early one base all in. I don't know if Tier is going to be able to hold this. Attack Lab coming down that factory. He's going to be getting tanks, and he's putting bunkers on the side. And good thing, because this is a huge area to defend. He needs to get uh, Marines in there immediately. He needs to get a tank out, and he needs to have SCVs getting ready to auto repair. This is super annoying. Love the placement of it. It can't be sniped from the low ground. Missile turret coming up. He's not sure if it's going to be DTs or not. Being extra careful is tier. Getting his third gas. Mothership core making its way down. Do you have another warp in of stalkers? Two pylons at this optional third location. Oh wow, and this I don't get why he did that pylon. Yeah, three gate blink stalker. 
We'll see another warp in or two. And then see him blink in. And this bunker is full. Second bunker coming down on that side. One bunker in the front's already full. Tank almost complete. Okay, eight stalkers. This is a good number. He's going to blink in right now. And he blinks right in. The tank is out. The tank needs to siege. It's going to siege. SCV's being pulled. And will he save the bunker? Will he save it? He's going to save that bunker. And he's going to save that tank. And just tell those stalkers to F off. Now there's three stalkers being warped in right now. Don't know if he's going to wait for another warp in or what he's going to do. This is well fortified right now, leaving a, a few SCVs here on auto repair just so that they can just be able to heal the heal up these bunkers as soon as these blink stalkers come in and try to harass. Mothership Core just giving a quick little check out. One tank's out. He should get another tank. Okay, we're the, another blink coming in. But little does he know that this... Uh, will he be able to... No, he won't be able to. Losing quite a few stalkers right, right there. Taking out... I think he's overextending right now. Blinking into the main base. This isn't good. He can just pull SCVs as he's doing now. Just to soak up, uh, soak up hits for the Marines. And he's just going to be able to take this out. And honestly... Uh, our Terran player is in such a good spot right now. He's 47 over over 62. While our, our test player is just still on one base um, and not making probes. When we have double mules, we ha oh, what's happening here? Oh no, we're almost losing the uh, mothership core, and we'll lose it now. Another four pylon putting being put up. I wonder what this was for oh, because he tried to kill him or something. We do have a scan showing that there is no expand, or the expand is coming down right now. So this is really good for Tier. He's gonna know. He's gonna know that he, that that probe is gonna be putting down that natural expansion. He might be able to. He might want to second check it with. I don't know whatever. But uh, he can basically think that this guy is gonna expand right now, which means he's investing into an expansion. He won't be going into any more tech. And so basically, the tech he's on right now is where he's gonna have to stay until he's able to get that second up. Second, uh, third tank in production. Third tank in production. Great tank placement. Not being able to snipe from the high ground, and if anything really walks up, we'll be able to take it out. We do have oh, another bunker went down, and uh, this sensor tower is absolutely key. And in case there's DTs, another missile turret. So good for tier. Just being ready for just about anything. Has double mules, double SCV production, and is just in a really good spot because as soon as this is completely thwarted with it when Arthur I don't know why he's making more stalkers this isn't gonna work oh, he's waiting for the other mothership course so he has high ground division second take is out it's sieged picking up a few marines at the front trying to pick off all these SCVs which is a great idea so they can't do any more auto repair but Tyr is pulling more SCVs. Will they get their time? Oh yeah, they're there in time. Going to be able to just keep these these stalkers away and warping in more stalkers. Third tank is out. Oh. And still not being able to, to crack open this front. Oh my gosh, this is Slapai Depot getting so low. And Arturus is... Going back over to the side of his base, however, uh, that sensor tower is amazing. Sees where everything is. He'll be able to move his workers in a general direction, which he knows he'll be able to defend. But let's see how this goes. A fourth tank is out. This is just too good right now. And here comes the blink into the main of tier. In between three, ter three bunkers, two tanks, three tanks, and a bunch of auto-repairing SCVs. But no, Arturus is just going to recall. But that was probably his doom, to be honest. If he's not keeping Terran in his base, Terran's going to be allowed to leave. Terran sees the natural. Definitely sees everything he's got. Doesn't have any, any AoE tech. And Tyr just unloading all the bunkers, grabbing all the tanks and all his SCVs, and he's going to be doing the death train.
AKA the pain train. And a uh, oh, Raven is out! Yes! Tier so so just on top of everything, being ready for a DTs if it if it would happen. Except is he leaving his front down? Yeah, it doesn't matter because he's just he's just marching across. So if I was this Protoss player, I wouldn't be very happy right now. I mean, did did some a, a really cheeky uh, blink stalker roll in? <laughs> and it didn't work. And now Terran's just gonna pain train so hard. Oh gosh, this is hilarious. And I heard that this Protoss player actually he's the coordinator for UT San Antonio. And what ended up happening is he uh he raged off and none of us knew what was going on. Oh and a PDD, oh god, and here's the siege. Oh, the siege is good. The siege is so good. Oh, we tried to do Nexus Cannon and screwed it up. That's what that was. <laughs> it was trying to be Nexus Cannon but screwed it up. And honestly, he'll be able to pick off quite a few of these units, but there's enough bio here to stop basically everything, and this Immortal's gonna be toast. Congratulations, University of New Mexico, for taking this game one between UT San Antonio. And here we are into game number two on Frost. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have that red Terran player representing University of New Mexico. His name is Loafer Bear. In the top right-hand position, we have that blue Protoss player representing UT San Antonio. His name is uh, Zalhuka. Zalaku. 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 I like how it comes off my tongue. Hope I'm saying it right. Really bad at phonetically doing X's. They sound like Z's? They sound like S's? Not even sure. Another TVP in this series. Uh, we'll probably see another Reaper expand or some type of oh, Reaper. Because on this map, this is a four player map. It would be ab absolutely good for our Terran player to open with um, two Reapers. Just to poke around. Make sure to be able to see. He, but with the Reapers, he will be able to expand on the low ground. Hopefully. Oh, wow. This is a super early gateway. Um, looks like we're going to have a Zealot Rush on our hands. Or just a few unit pressure. Because this is, this is very quick. Very quick. Both players will find each other at about the same time, both um, scouting in the wrong direction, and they are both cross map. So, what kind of build is this? He's getting gas. So, he's going to get stalkers. Getting warp gates kind of out of the question. That's kind of like an afterthought to whatever he, he thinks he's going to be doing. And our Terran player is going to open, it looks like it's going to open Reaper or Quick Factory, but probably Reaper. No, opening Marine. Going to definitely be opening Marine there. And Cyber Core. So this is a one base timing. Um... That's a super early zealot, and, and the fact that it's leaving... No, it's coming back, and I'm going to try to kill the SCB. Um... And our Terran player is getting that reactor core on, going to make a bunch of marines, going to probably put down a bunker at the natural. This is all pretty typical, but, however, I don't think he knows that a Stalker... Yeah, it's just a Stalker, Mothership Core, and Zealot is what it looks like, and this is going to be pretty painful. And we do have Warp Gate started, so he's going to add more gates on in a minute. This is definitely just an... Oh, wow. Such an early timing. Honestly, I don't think Logan Bear is going to be able to deal with this. He's expanding the low ground. I mean, he can pull it back. Um... 
he, these buildings are too close too close to this and can be sniped. He needs to be closer to his base. He is getting his factory down now. He could get a widow mine that may help. And the zealot is there, and there's only one marine. This marine's gotta kite his heart out. And will he be able to? No! That marine just falls. And moving right up into the main. Uncontested. Two marines in production. The zealot and stalker are there. We do have a forward pylon. Warp gate is halfway finished. Two marines out. They gotta stay alive. This bunker has to finish. This bunker has to finish right now. Unfortunately, it was sniped and losing one marine. And honestly, his production facility, his main production production facility, is between his army and their army, or like on the outside of it. This is absolutely horrible. It's such a horrible position for Lofer Bear. However, great play by Zaku. And migrate back that stalker. There's just nothing Lobo Bear can do. And warp gate is finished. Two more gates are being created, so three just the three gate timing. Oh, insult to injury. And we have the GG and Zel Haku, representing University uh, UT San Antonio, takes this game number two. So it's all evened up right now. And we're jumping into this game three, which is a 2v2 between uh, Kim Jong Skill and Ragnamosh, representing University of New Mexico against Electral and Botwes. Botwes, representing UT San Antonio. So this is a 2v2. I'm going to do the best I can with this. I'm not very good at casting these, but we'll see what both seem to be doing in this 2v2 matchup. In 2v2, it's very different than 1v1. In 2v2, you want to get a lot of units earlier or find a, a, a timing in early game or right at mid game that's very very powerful or be able to defend what the other person's doing if it comes earlier as long as both armies stay together fight together defend together that's the best way to go and as soon as in the early game you ha like your team has that advantage you will then expand and defense it <laughs> uh, it looks like um, UT San Antonio will be doing a more defensive build. This pylon indicates that uh, they want to take their naturals early. Normal stuff coming from University of New Mexico. It looks like... Is the gas coming down? Not going to have a reaper out. Oh wow, we are going to see a, for a forge opening at the front here. Going to get some cannon defense. And no gas coming from the tent. We are seeing a second barrack comes, barracks come down. We will see some early aggression from University of New Mexico. Single gas at this time for a protest kind of indicates four gate or a cyber expand or gate cyber expand. But it looks like they'll probably go for it. They'll do it together. And our Zerg player just expanding, getting gas. We'll see what he puts his gas into, speed or lair. And we're just seeing a wall of cannons come up here from UT San Antonio. It looks like they're just going to wall themselves in and just bank up. Hopefully this is enough defense. And we're seeing more racks come down from Kim Jump Skill from University of New Mexico. We are seeing some type of all-in from him. 
a lot of Marines. Warp gate being researched. Second gas going down. Definitely going to see some more gates coming down here, and it will be a four gate. There are these cannons. Six cannons. It's a lot of cannons. Is he going to finally take that expand? Is he getting gas? No. Our Protoss player is has an expand. Not getting gas. Oh, and we're seeing a very fast layer from our Zerg friend. He's going to go straight Muta. I mean, that's what you do in team games. You go straight Muta. If you can be defended, just go straight Muta and you'll win. Oh, man. Oh, man, this is scary. Oh, it looks like University of New Mexico will be launching an offensive from the general um, s southern area of near the main base of our UT San Antonio players. Other gates coming down. Warp gate nearly completed. Mothership core in route. A lot of Marines coming across the map right now. We'll see that warp in in just a moment. And what does UT San Antonio have? Spire is down. He's not getting... He's, he has two gas. Oh, our Protoss player is going to feed him gas. Oh. Good play. Good play from San Antonio. For sure. But will this 4-gate and Mega Marine all-in work against this, this six cannon wall? It's a 6-6 six, six cannon wall. They come up, lose a marine. This is enough st stuff to shadow. Definitely wait for another warp in and then go right in because they have nothing. They have absolutely no offensive units except for these. And if all they have to do is just start taking out these overlords and he won't be able to make mutas. But our Pro even our Protoss player, he's moving back, posturing back and forth. Our Terran player is just going to take the watchtower. They're going to warp more stuff in. Man, this is really close. Four meters in production. Yeah, our Protoss player is feeding him. Uh, this is such a good play. It's so annoying to deal with this. And how many? Nine mutas. This is a lot of mutas. And there's nothing back at their base. It's quite... There's nothing at all. We're just seeing a Twilight Council come down right now to open up that bit of tech. He could take his expand right now. That would be good. Or warp it in. Uh, another warp in and just go through that. Because as long as they stay together and they kill those those cannons, they will be able to kill the mutas. Oh god, that's a lot of mutas. And what time is it? It's eight. It's eight minutes and twenty seconds. Eight minute mutas. It's quite scary. What will our University of New Mexico teams do? Team members do. And the mutas are in the main base of Ragnamosh. Oh, going to be trying to get a warp into some stalkers right here to stop it, or at least slow it down. Should pull his probes also to 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 him. Oh wow! Another muted production. Another muted just getting to the clump. And University of New Mexico is pulling its forces back. Oh, and Ragnarok putting his uh, mothership core into the mineral line. We'll be able to work on some probes here, and there is no anti-air over here at all. Oh, these mutas are gonna are absolutely terrible to deal with. We have Kim Kim Jong's skill coming in. Help defend. Needs to get he has one tur two turrets up. Definitely needs more. Just needs to expand. They need to just hold down the fort and expand. That's that's all they really need to do right now. They need to catch back up. And where is that mothership core? Did it die? No, it's just chilling outside. Oh, on very low health as well. And these mutas are just going to be able to pick up our part Kim Jong skill. There's nothing in his base right now. It's going to be this walk back and forth between bases. But they're spending their money. They are spending their money. They do need that expand. 
Oh, that's a lot of mutas. Oh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21 mutas. That's, that's the official scary number is 20. When there's 20 mutas, that's, that's super scary. It means they'll actually try to work on cannons and missile turrets. And these mutas are just doing wreaking havoc right now. Our Protoss player looks like he's he's just getting up his tech right now. We'll have to see what he ends up going. He has a lot of money and a lot of gas, and they all could be taking more bases if they wanted to. With these mutas, UT San Antonio has map control. That's a lot of mutas. Such a scary amount. Ragnarok's trying to get his infrastructure back up. Uh, not necessarily going to work out. He doesn't have enough to stop these mutas. Too many muta. So many muta. And more mutas arriving. Oh. Getting Blink. However, Blink's not going to be good in this situation. Um, going Archon is great. But really, going cannons and just static defense. Static defense and more stalkers. And expanding and getting that money up. And what are we seeing? Oh, Mega Robo. Going straight to Colossus. Ugh. And these mutants have kept the University of New Mexico in their own base. We are seeing Kim Jong's skill. Um, we are seeing him expand right now. Oh, like I said, it's such a scary amount of mutants. It, they'll just work on missile turrets. They, they don't give any Fs at all. No Fs given. You know, I always wonder if something like this will work, and it does. Just turtle up, feed your opponent, get a lot of a tier 2 unit that's really annoying to deal with, and sometimes impossible to deal with. Just the speed. Speed of them is just ridiculous. And Kim Jong, he's got him. Oh, he's got to be careful when he stims. He doesn't have any medevacs out right now. Oh, there's more mutas. And yes, we're, we're watching uh, UT San Antonio's Protoss player go straight into Colossus. Muta Colossus. If there wasn't a more annoying thing, there was Muta, Colomp Muta Colossus composition. This is where I just really take the backseat on casting, because there's just kind of too much going on, and it's there's really not much that our um... oh we do have a dark shrine from University of New Mexico. Uh, how he decides to use that, if he's going to try to do some rest, but he, he can't get into the space at all. He needs to make archons with them if that's the case, or try to. He needs to hold and expand. How many mutas? Like almost 40. And Ragnamosh GG's University of New Mexico didn't survive the muta apocalypse of 2014. And we are seeing a bunch of Colossus move across the map. Kim Jong skill, feeling the skill is on. Wants to destroy all of these mutas, but does not know about these colossus just marching their way up. But I do think there was a moment where University of New Mexico could have broke this wall, got in, and just base raced. Because there wasn't enough mutas out. 
They would have hit overlords. I wouldn't have been to make any more mutas. It wouldn't have mattered. Just need another warp in. And really, there was no way to stop this. There's no way to stop those, those, uh, those mutas. All you can do is basically turtle up and fortify and try to get your expansions down, and then, you know, rush to the next level of tech to counter Muta Colossus. And Kim Jong skill went for the the doom drop. Not necessarily working out. Not enough medevacs. Not not enough upgrades for sure. And we have the GG, and uh, right now we have Uni UT San Antonio is two up with University of New Mexico only winning one match, but this fourth match was actually forfeited by UT uh, San Antonio because their player wasn't able to arrive on time and University of New Mexico's player had to leave. So that means it did go to the ace match, and let me get up that ace match. And here we are on Whirlwind? Wow, we're on Whirlwind. I haven't seen Whirlwind in so long. Um, this is the ace match between University of New Mexico and UT San Antonio. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have that red Terran player. He's representing University of New Mexico, and his name is Loafer Bear. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have that pink Protoss. He's representing UT San Antonio, and his name is Adaris. Another TVP, and if you remember Adaris, he was the Blink Stalker all-in guy from the first game in this series, and Lofer Bear was the guy that was destroyed by a Protoss, um, early Gateway, uh, early Zealot, Stalker, Mothership Core, timing into three, Warp Gate, all-in. And again, in TVP, we have that Terran, he wants to get that Reaper expand. He wants to do it. He, it's it's the safest thing you can do. Uh, making a second Reaper is annoying, especially if, if the Protoss doesn't go gas very quickly or gets like a, a quick enough Stalker out. It'll have a lot. To, it'll have to do some probe microing. And, well, he will lose some probes in the process, but we'll probably see a Gateway Cyber expand. A Gateway expand or Gateway Cyber expand from our Protoss player. He, we'll see if he wants to do another online, but he's only taking one gas right now. Might want to take the other one in a moment, not necessarily sure. Gas coming down at a time where it looks like we're going to see a Reaper or maybe an early factory, but I, hopefully it's the Reaper. Um, Protoss, gate expands are really good. Blink Stalker all ends are really good <laughs> against Terran. But I don't think we're going to see that. He's only one gas right now. Not going to really tech too quickly. We'll see that cyber core come down. And it looks like a gateway cyber expand. We are seeing that Reaper come out first. I think the Gourds. Ooh. And I, I don't like this building placement against Protoss. If you want to, wall in a little bit later, but keep your production facilities near your, near your main. In this map, it's not as easy to do a Blink Stalker, uh, blink stalker all in. There's this area by the uh, third location where they can get in, and there's also the front, but probably the front's more likely. You'll be able to get more units in because there's sort of a gap here. SCV gonna come and see the natural being put down by our Protoss player. Mothership core is out, warp gate is started. We'll see the gas timing on that second gas. Because he's kind of in a good spot. Protoss wants to be passive. Whoa. 
Second command center coming up. Factory and another barracks coming down. Terran just getting up his infrastructure. I mean, with that Reaper, he could just put it on the low ground. There's no reason not to. Especially since he just scouted that this um, Protoss is going to be passive. Oh, and a quick Robo. No, no, it's on time, Robo. And I don't like what this Reaper is not in that base causing a headache. It's that's where that Reaper should be, causing headaches on the Protoss. I mean, there is only one way to get in, which kind of sucks, but he does the naturals now. Well, no, you can't get in with the Mothership Core. I guess that makes sense. Well, it should be around that general area. Just getting ready to kind of poke in, see what's going on, see if he sees any units. Terran player is moving to CC to the natural. And our Protoss player just seems a little bit more ahead. Getting more gateways right now. Getting get that getting get out that observer. Stims being researched, reactor cores are going down. And we are seeing a reactor core on this factory. Looks like it either be aliens or widow mines. Don't see too much widow mine play in TVP. No, it's good. It'll soften up the units in the front. But no, actually just getting getting taken off. Just to get the add-on for the Metabex. And the factory will be used for scouting. Reaper coming back around to see what's going on. Two stalkers in the front, mothership core and a sentry. Doesn't really reveal too much about tech. Oh, we have Colossus coming out. This is a quick this is a like a quick two base Colossus. There is a timing for this. A good timing for this. Will he leave with one or will he leave with two? But he's not making any now. He's getting this plus one armor. Yeah, our Protoss player is just very ahead at the moment. A. 30 to 43 workers in favor of the Protoss. I don't think Lofa Bear has seen this. Has he seen? No, he doesn't know anything that's happening with that. Doesn't know anything about the, the Colossus tech. I mean, he can assume it's coming, and we do have a Twilight Council down, opening that, opening that tech up. Probably gonna get a High Templar. Double Engineering Bay coming down. And Loverbird is just gonna um, get his Bio Force together. Maybe do a few drops. And that's what Loverboro needs to be doing is um, maybe doing doing some drops, trying to poke in there, look around. I think he lost that Reaper. No, he still has that Reaper. He could use it. We are seeing a Zealot look at the third location to see if Loverboro has taken a third. Second Colossus on its way out. First one's already out. Extended Thermal Lance will be done by the time the second one comes out. And Loaf Bear is moving across the map with this small marine marauder force and a reaper. The Lucian Phoenix is going to show everything. I'm putting down a missile turret. Are you a scout? Okay, yeah. Didn't see it. Didn't see anything in that area. And we'll see if our Terran player really wants to engage up into this area. We are seeing our Protoss player take his natural expansion. 
But really, with this Colossus and these um, set, just this little composition here, we'll be able to destroy this this army from low for bear. And here's the engage. We have the Protoss player just chasing off our Tan player right out of here. And the stim out. Loaf Bear's trying to take his third right now, and he will be able to. The Protoss army is returning. No! He's turning around. Turning around. Gonna go try to deny that third, and that Viking might get picked off. No? It's just gonna go out that way. He needs that Viking with his bio, he needs quite a bit more. Oh no, and he's gonna lose this Viking. And Protoss is just going to come into the third area. Loafer Bear and Bear is just stimming up, trying to take out these these forces, gain a good concave on them. But being able to be picked off slowly. Oh, and the force fields are good. But our Protoss player needs to get back. One Colossus is very low, and he has little to no anti-air, killing one Colossus. We do have, uh, Templar Archives has just finished. Where was it? Oh, we had a, a walk-in through the main base. Another Zealot run by. Wow, that's a lot of Zealot run by. Loafman not having his army together, trying to snipe that Colossus real quick, loses a Viking. And now most of his marines are coming up in this choke area, and there is a Colossus, and are there High Templar? Not yet. The storm's being researched. And is gonna need to retreat. Vikings getting sniped. Archon being morphed. Zealot's still ravaging the natural expansion of Loafer Bear. Loafer Bear trying to macro out of this. Doesn't really have any active workers right now. Oh, well, I mean, there's 29 on his third. Oh, well, now he's moving back. He's getting himself situated again. But as I said before, our protest player is in such a commanding lead. Uh, two attack versus one one. Is your two two on the way? And his two two is nearly finished. No, he's he's on good footing. He needs to make sure that Viking counts up and he spreads his Marines. He might have to get ghosts pretty soon. Uh, Storm is in play. We have two High Templar just chilling. More to be warped in. This is a very powerful army for our Protoss, and he has a lot of money banked up, and his supply reflects such power. Vehicle and ship weapons, level one. Being researched for Vikings. For added punch. Oh, it's natural. It doesn't have many SCVs at it. And not continuing. Needs uh, more Needs more stuff for sure. But he's coming with a timing, and he has his 2 2 will be finished. 3 3 weapons has just started. What about our Protoss player? Uh, two defense, one attack is what he has. And the skin reveals the Protoss army and the natural. Tons of High Templar. And he does not want to get into that. He needs to start ghost production. But going for a drop, which is a great idea, as that Protoss army moves out, drops are awesome. And Protoss has taken his fourth expansion. Let's see that drop. Uh, dropping sort of in a okay position, only taking out one probe and losing everything to this army. And a feedback tells that medevac it can't exist. And it's getting to see nothing. 
but High Templar. And Stalkers. So Lover, I'm not sure what he's waiting for. He's, I mean, he's in a rough position right now. He needs to kill that Zealot to get us fourth. He needs to get up um, sort of a perimeter and put his army into a good position. Because the Protoss is just expanding everywhere, and the longer Protoss is able to stay uncontested and just building his force, he's going to trade these Stalkers out, get better units, or just get more Zealots, especially against Bio. You just want the Zealots to take it. Here's an engage, but we'll see if Loaf Bear wants to go outside or fight at the choke. Our Protoss player just kind of gesturing up, wants to destroy those rocks so we can get a, get a full area to get up in. There's a lot of zealots here, and the storms take out. Oh my god, unbelievable storms. UT, UT San Antonio's storms have ravaged Lover Bear in such a way which will make him sad for the rest of this day. And that's all the army from Lover Bear. We're definitely going to see a GG here soon. Lover Bear not um, getting, not producing enough, or not getting enough in the economy to, to outproduce his opponent as well as just getting hit at a, uh, a timing in which there's unbelievable AoE from our Protoss player. And congratulations UT San Antonio for taking this series between University of New Mexico 3-2, but one of those games for University of New Mexico was a forfeit. And thank you University of New Mexico CSL team, uh, UT San Antonio, and the CSL 